In this video, we are going to look at various report dashboards from within WhatsApp Gold. We will take a look at the home dashboard and the device status reports. We will start by taking a look at the home dashboard. Navigate to Analyze, Dashboard and Home Dashboards. Here we can see that we have six out-of-the-box views available to us. Overview, Top 10, Actions and Alerts, Wireless, Critical Activity, and storage monitoring. First, we will take a look at the overview. The first report we can see here is the current device status. This gives us a quick overview of how many devices are up, down, in maintenance, or unknown. We can click into each status, which will bring us into the monitored network filtered by the selected status. By default, the report is filtered on all device groups, but we can break it down by individual group if necessary. We can also change some settings if there are certain statuses we do not want to see as part of the report. Next, we have the Enable Active Monitors report. This gives us an overview of how many active monitors are up and down in the system. We can click on the columns to open the full report. From here, we can change the date range, filter by device, open up the device properties, see the device status, or see the state change timeline report. This report is also filtered by default to My Network, which we could break down by group if necessary. We can also change the graph type in the settings options. Next, we have the device role composition report. This gives us an overview of all device roles within the system. Again, this defaults to My Network and can be broken down by group. We can also change the graph type from within the settings. And the last report here is network coverage. This gives us a count of how many monitored and unmonitored devices we have within the system. You will also notice that every report has a drop down at the top right, which gives us additional options. We can refresh the report. We can move the report around the view. We can reset the height if the report height was previously modified. We can expand the report, which opens the report in full screen mode. This also allows us access to the export options, which we will run through later. We can also delete the report, and we also have access to the help menus. It's important to remember that these are just out of the box reports, and it is possible to add additional reports to any view if required. Next, we'll take a look at the top 10 report. This dashboard gives an overview of the top 10 devices in each of the reports shown here. CPU utilization, disk, memory, ping response time, interface utilization, ping availability, interface traffic, interface discards, and interface errors. Taking the disk utilization report as an example, we can quickly see that there are two devices with 100% of their disks used. We can change settings to see more than the top 10 devices. And we can also apply a threshold filter as seen here. We can launch the real-time performance report from here. This allows us to see which disks are most used and enable other disks for additional information on this report. In this example, we can see that it is the storage archive disk that is 99% utilized. We can also change some additional settings in this report. And we can also change the report type if we wanted to change, for example, to real-time CPU data for the same device. The next report we will take a look at is Actions and Alerts. This dashboard shows us Action Fired Reports, Completely Down Devices, and Down Active Monitors. As we see here, we have multiple down devices and active monitors, but no actions have been triggered in the time frame selected. Perhaps this is something that needs to be investigated if devices and active monitors are going down, but no actions are being triggered. 
Similar to the top 10 reports, we can also change some of the report settings as seen here. Next, we will take a look at the wireless report from the top 10 dashboard. This shows us information available on the wireless infrastructure we may have discovered, such as wireless LAN controllers or access points. We can see reports including system summary, where we can see in this example, we have one wireless LAN controller with one access point and with nine clients connected to it. We have the bandwidth summary report, wireless row count, the wireless bandwidth report, the RSSI or received signal strength indicator report, and the wireless client count. Next, we will take a look at the critical activity dashboard. This shows us information on various system events based on a date time range selected. We have reports such as device activity, consolidated log activity, network activity, system activity, APM activity, and discovery activity. Like the majority of other reports, we can modify the settings to change the level of information that we want to see on each report. The last report on this dashboard is the storage monitoring. If you are monitoring storage devices like NetApp or EMC, information about these devices will be shown here. We have reports like free disk space, disk utilization, CPU utilization, memory utilization, and interface traffic. Like most other reports, we can change the settings on the reports to change the information that we see. Also, remember all of these reports are standard out-of-the-box reports and can be deleted or added to depending on the customer's needs. Next, we're going to take a look at the Device Status Dashboard. Browse to Analyze, Dashboards and Device Status. In this dashboard, we can see we have four different views. Monitoring, Disk CPU and Memory, Router Switch Interface, and General. We'll start by taking a look at the Monitoring view. As the dashboard name suggests, these are device-specific reports rather than a general group overview. In here, we have four reports configured by default. The Ping Response Time, in here, we have the option to click directly into the real-time performance monitor. The state change timeline, giving us an overview of any activity on the device. Down active monitors, device active monitor states, and action activity log to see what actions have triggered on the device as a result of the state changes. From the top of the view, we can select which device we want to view information for. And we can also change the date time range. Next, we'll look at the disk CPU memory report. Again, this is broken down by device, which can be chosen from the top of the report. We can see reports including CPU utilization, memory utilization, and disk utilization. We can also open up the Real-Time Performance Monitor report. And we can make changes to the settings of the reports. Next, we'll take a look at the Router Switch Interface view. As the name suggests, this is useful for information coming from routers and switches. Here we can see reports including interface utilization, down interfaces, interface details, which can be expanded to show additional information on the interfaces, and interface utilization. Again, like previous reports we have looked at, we can open the real-time performance reports and also modify some of the report settings. The last view on this report is general. This gives us a general device overview, including device information and status. From here, we have access to a few tools, including device properties, web task manager, ping, trace route, lookup, layer two trace, and IP Mac finder. We can also see what monitors and groups are associated with the device. We have the monitors applied report, device custom links, 
device notes and the device attributes report. Remember, everything we have looked at so far is pre-configured and out of the box when it comes to reporting. If we want to add a new view with different reports, we can easily do so. Select the drop-down beside the view name as seen here. Select Add View. Click Empty View. Give the view a name and select how many columns you would like to have. And click OK. We can now select reports from the right-hand side and add them into the view as we see fit. We can add reports into different columns and move them around as we need to. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this training.